Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima. I know I usually do a sort of like post commentary style on the DLC for Darius Burst, but this time I want to get a little bit down and dirty because, well, the the ships in this game have a lot of interchangeable weapons. At least this, this pack have a lot of interchangeable weapons. So I want to be able to just mention them as we go through, and I don't want to have to rely on myself remembering to do it while I'm playing the game. And, well, honestly, I can't be bothered doing the editing, because, well, seriously, it'll take me ages to edit um, something that good together. So, let's go and have a look at the DLC. Jesus Christ, that's loud. I forgot I had it on maximum volume. Um, just before I forget, the reason why I had it on maximum volume is because I think it's this ship here. Can't hear it. Can't hear it when it gets hit. It's silly. Like, I know, I know at least one of these ships has really quiet hit sounds. I'll probably be able to mention this later on, but yeah. So, this is the 18 DLC pack. Um, if you can't find it via the Vita store at the moment, find it via the web store and buy the PlayStation 4 version, because it'll give you the Vita ones in the download list. That's how I got it. And of course, this will be on PC too, for anyone who does watch from PC. So, as per usual, the pack has three ships that cost 12 bucks, or you can buy them for 5 bucks each. There's the Miy Miyamoto from... I'm not going to be able to pronounce these, and I apologize. Mahu Daisuku-sen. Daisaku-sen. Okay. You have the Toryu from... Sulkyo Gorentai. And finally the Wild Snail from Battle Garega. Yes, you can actually pronounce that one. That's great. We'll do the obvious thing. We'll start with the Miyamoto. But just before we do... Per usual, you've got three stages for every individual ship. I'll be playing stage two, then stage three for the other two. And of course, you've also got an aiding pack stage pack, which has four defenders, three scrambles, and three individual bosses for practicing. And you've got an extra CS pack, which has 30 extra stages. At this point, I really don't wonder why they don't just make something along the lines of a Chronicle Saviors Plus mode, where it just lets you play all the stages, but with the DLC ships. But oh well, let's just get on into the ship stages. So we'll start with, of course, the Mahu Daisaku Sen ship on stage two. And it's got attack power up drops and we start with a specific amount of life, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Why did I just go French for like two seconds there? What the hell? Let alone. All right, so here we go. This is the Mahu Daisaku Sen ship. It moves and fires like a regular ship, turns around with the R button. That's all, that's all well and good. And you can upgrade both your side weapons and your main cannon via the usage of... I just got hit there. Via the usage of the red and green power-ups, respectively, of course. If you tap the... Was it the L button? Yeah, it's the L button. If you tap the L button, you can swap between three different weapons. And you can customize this in the controls menu for every ship, which is nice. You've been able to do this for every ship beforehand. If you tap the L button, you can swap between the three different kinds of weapons that the ship has on the side. Which is nice. This is actually a bit of a running theme in this DLC pack. Just generally having, like, swappable weapons so that you can use different strategies for different hordes of enemy ships. So, what are the three bullet types? The three bullet types. Right now, I have the blue bullet type equipped, which is the weakest shot that you have, but it does an absolute ton of splash damage. So, it's absolutely fantastic for taking out enemy hordes. If I hit the L button, I'll go to the red one, and the red one is a homing shot. It's, about the, it's the second strongest you've got. And the homing shot will just aim in the direction of whatever enemy's closest. So, it's a little bit just hold down the fire and dodge, but nowhere near as egregious about it as something like the cave DLC. So, not too big of a deal. Hit the old button again, and you get the green sub-weapon, which is a piercing weapon. It can pierce through some enemies once it gets strong enough. And... It also just fires straight forward. So if you want just a full-on fire down the front weapon, that's this is basically your thing. You also have access to this. It's a magic bomb. That that's pretty much it. Like 
There's nothing special about that bomb whatsoever. Unlike the, um, a car just started up outside, so you might be hearing a little bit of low rumbling. Um, unlike the, one of the other ships in this DLC, that bomb doesn't get affected by anything. You just, you just hit X and you just launch a bomb right in front of you. That bomb actually stops everything except, like, lasers, I think. I haven't tried it on lasers, but still, it, it stops pretty much anything. Although I'd still be dodging just in case something happens to miss it. Yeah, the blue is absolutely great for taking out, excuse me, swarms of enemies like this. They just wander in and die. It is a bit... Hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? It is a bit egregious about the bullet spam, especially with the blue mode on something that isn't a boss, because... Like, watch this. This is one of the parts where the rocks come flying. And the nice thing about the stages, the three stages that they include that are named after the actual games is that they're actively designed for these ships. I don't know if I've mentioned that before. I'm sure some, you, most of you know this already, that, who've been, actually been paying attention to these DLCs. But yeah, the, the DLC stages that have the names specifically named after the ship are designed for the ships in question. So it's very good for showing off the individual abilities, which is nice. It means I don't have to do that much work. But yeah, it does feel a bit bullet spammy and silly. But, at the same time, the cave DLC was a hell of a lot worse, and at least with this one, you can't spam bosses with it at least too much, so... I'm not, I'm not too against it, not really. And it works alright, too, because there are indeed some things like this that this just won't work on. Like, the big, um, like, uh, seahorse monsters? Ships that tend to fly in from time to time? This will not work on them, absolutely not. And the other shots actually block things like that as well. Like, see, now, these shots are now strong enough to be piercing, and they actually block yellow shots, which is very useful on some bosses. Now we're going to fight the insane stare. I can hear the music in the background too, but it's not, um... I gotta admit, I haven't been listening to the music much. It sounds a bit, um... Well... Generic doesn't feel like the right word, but it feels like the closest I've got. It just, it, I... Then again, I have trouble kind of telling anything apart while I'm trying to play Darius first, so... Maybe that's my fault and not the games. I'm more than willing to admit that. Also of note is that the actual burst bomb charges up really quickly with this guy. I'm not entirely sure why. You'd expect it to be a hell of a lot slower, but... No, it charges up pretty damn fast. I'm guessing it does it on hit and not on enemy destroy, which is nice because a fair few of the DLC ships like um, Opa Opa have had problems with that, but actually works pretty well here. I'm not too annoyed by it. Woo lag. And away we go again. Pretty basic ship outside of the ability to swap weapons, which is perfectly fine. It works well enough. And it's pretty fun to fly, especially once you're able to start penetrating stuff. It's... You know what I mean when I say that. This is not Sword Art Online Hollow Realization. Good lord. Just, I just, I gotta get those main weapon power ups, but they're flying all over the place. Like, ow. Took one right in the face. Not very useful. Let's swap this. Yep, so as you can see, just massive amounts of splash damage for low HP enemies, which is great because there are some bastards that are just really annoying to deal with. It's nice though, the ship doesn't feel ridiculously overpowered, which is great. I don't feel like I'd be able to completely wipe out anything just with this ship without even trying, which is a good start. I hate it when they do that. Hi. Ow. Ow again. Ow again. I'm actually pretty good at this game when I want to be. It's 
nice playing again. I haven't played it in a while. It's um been very busy recently. I usually, I don't get that many opportunities to sit back, relax, and play a little bit of Darius first. Screw it. Splash damage. That's the end of it. Yep. <laughs> ah, didn't even have to open my mouth. Did it for me. All right, the. This is a bitch. I am not going. Well, I might live through this. I'm not guaranteed to live through this. I might live through this. But I cannot guarantee that I will. And after this, you have to fight the great thing. Yeah. Although, judging by the amount of health I've already lost, I'm probably not going to live through this. So. Yeah. The Golden Ruler. What a bitch. I want to save my bomb for when I'm really in trouble. Oh, that sucks for me. Might as well just do some damage while I've got the Mercy Invincibility. Oh, yeah, he's nowhere near dead. I'm not going to live through this. Oh, jeez. Yeah, because now he starts to do this. Walks along the ground and fires off a ton of bullets. That you cannot destroy with this ship, as far as I'm aware. Yep. I am pretty much dead. Yep, there we go. I did beat him the last time I tried this stage, but again, great thing, and I had like five hit le hits left, so <laughs> was not doing very well on that one, let me tell you. All right. Moving on to the second ship. When the game loads. There we go. This is a ship from Sokyo Grentai. Let's go to mission three, because mission two actually has like a bunch of really annoying bosses, so... Mission 3 will probably work better for de at least demonstrating the ship. Wait for it to load. I can understand why people appreciate me editing these together, but... God, it annoys me sometimes, I I've gotta say. So, pretty regular ship, except for that. This is the Sokyo Grentai ship, and it can fire missiles! Massive amounts of goddamn missiles. So the way it works is that you have access to a homing cone. Shit up my nose, I hate this stage. You have access to this homing cone, and anything that gets inside this homing cone is locked on to. And of course, when you release the X button, you will fire off missiles. Missiles hurt. Speaking the obvious, aren't I? You can use the regular missile, which is the I do. I really don't know how to pronounce that. It, the text is kind of hard to read on the Vita, but yeah, these are the I do missiles. They're great for um, great for just taking out massive swarms if you absolutely need to. There is also, however, a second type of missile, the pinpoint missile. Much more powerful, but you can't lock on as many times. Thankfully, your missiles refill the minute that you... The, no, not even the minute. The moment. Not the minute. The moment you let go of the x button and the missiles fire out. But it does take a second for you to start locking on to stuff again. So, you can lock on and fire as many missiles as you want. No questions asked. You just need to be constantly holding down the X button. Because the way that you swap the missiles is by... Tapping the X button. So you tap to swap the missiles and hold to fire the missiles. Which is a little annoying because you may find yourself swapping missiles without meaning to while you are trying to lock onto stuff. It's not that big of a deal because the missiles do lots of damage like no matter what one you've got. But Pinpoint does do more damage. So if you need to be focusing on 
something more, or if you're in the middle of an asteroid field like this, and you hit the, you hit the button accidentally, and the game's like, oh, you used one of the swap missiles. Okay, we'll swap missiles now. If you want to, if you're like that, and you end up using the pinpoint missiles in the middle of the asteroid swarm, you're probably going to take a couple of hits. It kind of sucks. To be fair, there's pro is there a button for changing that in the controls? No, it's um, it's all on one button. That's unfortunate. Also, this. Yeah, that actually changed the um, the warning a huge battleship is incoming screen for that. That's kind of neat. Also, you've got that. It's a bomb. Uh, I mean, I mean that's pretty obvious, but just FYI, it's a bomb. Somebody, no, not, 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 even, not even gonna finish that sentence. Notably though, this bomb's actually different depending on what missile mode you're in. So I've hit, oh, that's weird. I managed to get the bomb to come out as like a, just a sort of cluster bomb, which spread out into like 10 different directions at one point, but I'm not entirely sure how I did it now. I thought it was the missile mode that I was in. That was quick. <laughs> Shit. I didn't realize that, um, that guy was so weak. Oh well, it is alpha. It's a neat model. Uh, it reminds me of something. Kind of looks like a rooster from this angle, just with a jetpack ass. I mean, it's just the neck. The neck sticking out there and the little thing up the top. That's just It just kind of reminds me of a rooster. Don't, don't ask me what made me think of that right now of all times. I, don't, I didn't even see that beforehand, but whatever. Let's see if I can remember how to activate the super bomb. Nope. I thought, it, I thought it might have been hold the L button, but I guess not. Of course, the red shots allow you... Um, the red pickups, not the red shots, sorry. Allow you to upgrade your main shots. And you do get those little cannons on the side there as you get stronger. And you've also got the ability to upgrade your missile swarm via the... Green pickups. Bomb. It's actually a fairly satisfying bomb. All the DLC ships in this game have some really satisfying bombs. They just work really well. Or at least all the ships that do have bombs. Does the third one have a bomb? Uh, no. No, it doesn't actually have a bomb, does it? Ow. I'm just gonna stop focus this way, and of course I run right into that shot. Damn it! Bomb that son of a bitch! Yay! Bit cheeky, just camping on the edges of the screen there. It's all right. I have the perfect solution for you, bosses, in the third DLC ship, which is great. I am entirely looking forward to showing you that last ship because holy crap, it fulfills so many fantasies. Alright, we got another boss fight coming up. Annoying thing being, you can't actually see what you, what one it is, but you know, with these bosses they just, you know, they, they just wander on in. It's not that big of a deal. Let's swap back to pinpoint. Just send you as many missiles as possible and immediately get hit with the first shot that comes from the guy's face. I'd rather take one hit than take five from that beam. See, there's the, there's the cluster bomb. I'm not entirely sure what causes that. Ow. Keep dodging, damn it. I'm okay. Oh, uh, no, I'm not. Ah, <laughs> uh, these games are always fun. Especially when you're coming up against a new boss. You... It reminds me of fighting a new boss in Dark Souls, where you don't exactly know just what the fuck they're about to do. Which, it, which means it's a hell of a lot of fun just going up and finding out what they're going to do. Although it is pretty easy to forget on this ship that you have missiles that you can fire off. Alright, 
Let's do this. Wrong missile type. Correct missile type. Hooray for multipliers. Yeah, see, I just accidentally swapped there. I, well, well, I didn't even really accidentally do it. It was the game deciding to do it. Kind of annoying, but... Again, it's not like it's going to hurt you too badly, because, you know, the main cannon shot, especially once you get it upgraded, is pretty damn wide. So you don't really have that much to worry about. Although it does kind of suck trying to attack trying to attack on an angle when you don't have any missiles ready. Even if it is for that split second that you don't have missiles ready. Still a fun ship though. Plenty of fun trying to figure out the optimal points to use your missiles, because you do get extra points for using those missiles. So, of course, for those of you who love to go for score attacking, that's that's a thing. Me, I have enough trouble beating the bloody Azure Nightmare to worry about score attacking, so... Not exactly something I think too much about. I'm gonna take you out before you fire off another shot, but you weren't gonna fire off another shot anyway, and I'm gonna head up the arse by a piece of space wreckage. Pinpoint. Didn't really help. Pinpoint really is more useful for enemies that have multiple lock-on spots, because again, it is a stronger type of missile. Neat music going on in the background. Some sounds like someone's bashing his head against the. Is that is what? I don't even know what that instrument is, but it's just like dong, 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 dong. Sounds like someone's bashing his head against the bell. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good mental image. I like that. I'm just imagining a full-on orchestra, and then some guy standing next to a bell just banging his head against it. Pinpoint missiles! I think the trick to making sure you don't change missiles accidentally is to release once and then after you've launched your missiles, release once and then let go and then immediately press the X button again after you've let go and it'll stay on the pinpoint missiles until, well, obviously you fire again. I think that's the trick. Also notably, it's a lot easier to aim the pinpoint cone because the pinpoint cone is actually movable. I mean, you can move the... You can move the other cone as well, but considering it's so big, you can't really aim it precisely anyway. And why would you want to? It's meant for swarms. Ha! <laughs> I got these bigger guns and I'm literally one shot away from death. Poor bastard. That's it. Big spawn missiles. I guess one of the things that I have to talk about with this DLC pack is the performance. And while the... While it's, like, I mean, the cave DLC was worse about this. And I imagine that on the PC version, it's probably not that much of a problem. Or even the PS4 version is probably not that much of a problem. But on the Vita, it is. And it's that every ship in this DLC has times when the performance can slow to a crawl, and that kind of sucks. I just... I just body slammed that bloody ship there. Most of these ships do have points where the performance will just slow to a crawl, and that's really unfortunate. Just purely because of how well the rest of the game performs. I'm guessing... I'm guessing some of these effects are actually really heavy and therefore are kind of hard to get working on the Vita correctly, so... 
it's, it's still a bit disappointing, all things considered. Go away. There we go again. I think I can deal with these things, and there's two more! Especially since you have to get so close to get them to stop firing. Ah, uh, just you wait, you little bastards. I've got a ship. I have a ship just for you. I still have 33 hits left. What were they expecting me to have trouble with on this stage? I mean, considering that you can still get health back. It's not that long of a stage either, is it? It's like... It is like four stages and four bosses long. And this is the third mission. They're meant to be the hardest. I don't know. Maybe I've just gotten really good at playing this... Maybe I've just gotten really good... No, I can't finish that line with a straight face. I, I really can't. I suck at this game so badly. There we go. Actually managed to avoid all of them for once. End of stage, please. Nope. Sorry that you all have to die. I never really followed the story of this series much. Where the hell did I get all these ships from? And why do they all look like fish? Like, I imagine back when the original Darius came out, it wasn't a, um... It wasn't exactly something they were too concerned about, you know, actually outlining, you know, a bloody series canon or something like that, but... Did they ever add something like that? I know that the... Chronicle Saviors mode is meant to be a story, but you literally just get a couple of subtitle lines per mission, and that's if you're lucky. No, I'm letting him get away. There we go. Whoop, 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 whoop. Damn it. <laughs> okay, so what are we facing? The... Oh, shit. I have not faced this one before, and I'm afraid. Oh dear. So what can this one do? Oh, those are homing bullets. Oh god, I'm screwed. I hate homing bullets so much. Well, at least this is still how it normally is. He says, tempting fate. Yeah, they are really getting in the way. This is sort of annoying. Yeah, focus on one until the others go away. Hope for the breath. Hope for the breast. Was I seriously about to say that? Oh, homing shots. Actual homing shots. Really persistent homing shots. Shit. I'll take the hits. I really should be using my bombs, shouldn't I? Okay, I think I may have figured out how to make one bomb appear and how to make another appear. Although it's just a... Oh, that was a bad place to get stuck. Also, I was not expecting that. Jesus, giant laser beams. Alright. Test time. What does L plus X do? Yes, I think I figured out how to actually do it. You hit burst and fix burst at the same time, aka the um the bomb button and the missile button at the same time, and it does the cluster bomb burst. 
but if you just hit the bomb button normally, it does the fixed position burst. Very good. They actually learned something today. Final zone? Nope. Alright, all right. we've been on this ship for about 15-20 minutes already, so I'm just gonna um, quit out on this stage and go and do the other ship. I'm doing alright, but... Oh, hang on. Let's see what boss it is. If it's the Azure Nightmare, Rage quit. Ah, it's just him. No, that's fine. The... Yeah, he's the, um, the Dark Ruler, isn't he? He's actually not that bad, especially with that ship, but, um... Yeah, I don't want to spend too long on him, so we'll just, um... We'll just make our way over to the third ship. Arguably my favourite? It, it's kind of hard to pick a favourite in this DLC pack, because they're all pretty good ships. None of them particularly, like, stand out as being absolutely amazing ships, but they're all fun ships to pilot, so, I mean... Any one of them could take the top spot, so... Let's have a look at the third ship, shall we? After the loading times. Which are very long. Not really, but... There we go. So, this is the Battle Garega ship. This recently got an enhanced port onto the PlayStation 4. That the Vita didn't get. I'm actually kind of disappointed with that. I would have liked it. This ship's definitely the most unique of all the ships that are currently... That, that, that are currently in this DLC pack. Although they're going to give you a fifth aiding ship for free. No, there's, um, this is definitely the most unique ship in the pack, and what this ship does is, well, it's more or less just, um, a ship with a few extra ships. No, let me, let me actually say this properly. So, the ship is a regular ship. Of course, you've got your sub-weapons that you can power up by your different pickups, obviously. It works pretty basically in that respect. You have four different weapons. Here they are. Well, all in very quick su succession. But we'll start with the with the basic one, which is this one. No, no, it's this one. This one is just basically you fire a bunch of bullets. That, that's more or less it. Like, there's nothing really more or less to this one. The next one, if I hit L, is a constantly circling barrage of death. Very good for taking out swarms if you're in the middle of them. The game will do that a lot with this uh, with this one's particular stages. The third one is kind of like the um, the space harrier ship, where the direction that you're moving is the opposite direction of where you're shooting your sub weapon. You've still got your main cannon to work with out front, which is perfectly fine because that because it'd be bloody impossible to work this bloody gun if you couldn't fire in the direction you were moving or. You know, you get what I mean. So, yeah, that's a, that's a nice thing. It's also the most powerful and it pierces some bosses at the very least. So, shit, I just missed a health pick up there. The final sub weapon's arguably my favourite, which kind of sucks because it's also justifiably the weakest. The final weapon is literally the drones will hone in on any enemy and shoot them in the face until they die. Which is great for the cavern style things where you'll go on through and there'll be a bunch of turrets like on the walls and stuff. With these babies, they're dead before you can even see them. So yes, the little homing shot Turret bastards that you've always wanted to take revenge on for firing off homing shots as soon as they see you. They're, they're, they're dead. They're dead before they see you. Which is brilliant. Uh, wonderful. Magnificent. Bravo. Etc. Etc. Seriously, it's so good. Just, if you know it's coming up, you can literally just pop to that weapon for like 30 seconds and not have to have a care in the world. It's great. Look at that slowdown. Look at that. That is that is some slowdown right there, that is. There is of course a burst weapon. There is always a burst weapon, but it works pretty differently in comparison to all the others. The idea with this one is that you've been piling up all these missiles all this time, and what these missiles do is they power your burst weapon. And allow me to show it off right now with the disaster jaw. When you hit the X button, you let out a flamethrower. 
And depending on how many of these missiles you have in stock, with the big missiles representing a full burst, you can fire off that many shots of the flamethrower. And the flamethrower is, of course, honing. Because, of course, it is. I mean, it'd be, it, to be fair, it'd be bloody useless if it didn't. So, whatever. But, yeah. That's, that's how that works. You can fire this off at any time. Which is, which is cool. Even if you've only got a half-loaded mag. Like, so, see, I've only got, like, 75% of the missiles I need to make a full thing. It'll still let me fire them off. It just won't last as long. Well. So yeah, there you go. Pretty simple burst. The annoying thing being that, of course, you have to destroy enemies for them to drop the pickups, and you don't get that many of those when you're fighting a boss that doesn't really send out that many little grunts. So that is kind of a pain to deal with. Would have been nice if they made it like the um, like the other ship, the uh, the first ship, the Mahu ship or whatever the play hell it was called, that lets you um get weapon power-ups that lets you get a special burst that lets you get burst energy just by shooting things would be nice if they let you do that because that means it wouldn't be as much of a problem and it doesn't really seem to do that much damage like you notice that the disaster draw is a pretty early boss or at least a, a low tier boss it, do, it shouldn't really need that much firepower to take down but the flamethrower didn't really do that much to it. A little unfortunate. But to be fair, you are pretty damn powerful with all your other guns. So, like, I, I don't really have too much of a problem with it. I took a fair bit of damage there. That wasn't great. I don't know how I'm alive. Thankfully, I lived to pick up another health potion. Health potion. Health pick up and die another day. For another minute, knowing my luck. So yeah, it's a pretty simple ship. It does it does exactly what it says on the tin. All the DLC in this mode has been like all sorts of ships with like three or four different attacks on them, which has been nice. I mean, I know I kind of went off on the cave DLC for kind of being a sort of just hold the fire button down and relax and just dodge more than being uh, like any particularly mechanically interesting style of ship and these games aren't these ships aren't exactly mechanically interesting i mean the swapping the swapping weapons thing is great oh and by the way if you're wondering those gold pickups they're just points they don't really do anything else as far as i can tell but yeah they're not particularly mechanically deep but i do like the ability to swap the weapons out and having to pick what works for what situation it's nice. It does kind of leave you uh, with a sort of optimal route to go through, though. Swap to this weapon for this wave, then swap to this weapon for this wave for the most amount of points. But then again, score attack game. But how the fuck did I dodge that? It's like the Matrix right there. But yeah, um, I do enjoy all the ships in this pack, more or less. Uh, there's no particularly standout one being good or bad, which is fine by me. They're all pretty evenly matched. And the asking price of $12 for the whole pack, I think, is fair if you're still into the game. I still think my favourite DLC is the Sega DLC, because Space Harrier and Opa Opa just cannot be beat in how they take this game's concept and just just turn it upside down, which is nice. Yeah, look, look at that. That, that, that is something else. And the annoying thing is, with this boss, you actually have to get in close in order to, like, deal reasonable amounts of damage in a short amount of time, so... Yeah, it's um, not entirely the most pleasant thing ever. Thankfully, I had some ability to block the bullets there. Not much of an ability, but some ability. Right, I better just focus on dodging here. Yeah, it's not like I'd recommend... This isn't the one DLC I'd recommend if 
you are like, if you're not still playing this game wholeheartedly, I probably wouldn't recommend this DLC to you. That would be the Sega DLC. But still, if you're playing for it and looking for something new and just hoping that this DLC didn't turn out to be absolute garbage, then really it didn't. It's fun. It works. I'm dead. I I'm, I'm probably gonna die. I don't really stand a chance against the against this guy. He's just he's just so spammy. Jesus Christ. Dodge that. Don't even know what I was dodging. Just dodging whatever. Oh, well, my shield's gone. <laughs> We're back in the same place you were a minute ago. No health, gotta dodge the fishies. Damn it, hit down just a millisecond too late. But yeah. That was a look at all the DLC ships in the 18 pack for Darius vs. Chronicle Savior. It's a perfectly fine pack, and I have no problem with saying go pick it up if you're still playing the game, even remotely seriously. For those of you who aren't, go buy the actual game if you haven't already, because it's bloody good. Then go buy the Sega pack, because the Sega, the Sega pack is the best pack. But this is quite easily second off. Let's rate the packs right now. I mean, the... The Night Striker, the Mel Black, and the Raid Force versus the Space Harrier. Alright, one, two, and then the um, Taito Pack would be third, and then Cave would be fourth. At least that's my personal take on everything anyway. So yeah, this has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.